You okay? Yes, I'm fine. Okay. Waiting for the question. <laughs> yes, I'm fine. Well, um, what was the first show you ever did? Oh, 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 it's a long way back because I think the first duet I did, I did with my dad was in 1999. Since then, we just keep doing shows together as a duet. And I also do shows by myself, which my dad pushed me on that because I was not sure, I was not self-confident enough to just do it myself. And he said, yeah, you should have a one-woman woman show. I said, no, because, you know, I said, yeah, you have to do a one-woman show. Okay. So the first trick I've done, I think it was near 1993, something like that. I started magic when uh, I was 15 in 1988. And I started because my dad brought me with him to FISM in Den Haag in 1988. It was a great FISM. I mean, all the greatest were there. Ricky Jay, Jeff McBride, Vito Lupo, Rudy Cobby, Kevin James, uh, Michael Weber, everybody. They were there. And, you know, I just, I was blown away. Max Maven were there, of course. Uh, I was blown away because I saw all those people, those guys, sharing magic for uh, 20 hours a day, not sleeping, just sharing magic, talking about magic and other subjects also. But uh, I was so inspired by that. That's the first reason. The second reason, there are three reasons. <coughs> the second reason is that I saw my dad performing in front of seven people, 700 people. And uh, he did his cli climax, you know, the cups and balls, the force cup, the appearing of the force cup at the time, it was just wow. And the people just stood up and they just clapped and I was blown away by this energy. And I understood that magic can bring uh, emotions. Not only, you know, I'm not, I love magic, but I am not interested in a, a card trick and another card trick and another one. I'm interested in communicating with the, uh, the audience and that's for me the most important thing about magic. It's only a... I was trying to answer your question because it's a, it's a small question but for me it's a big question because that was the first show, I think it was in 1993 like I okay. told you, but FISM was very <coughs> important for me. Okay. And the third reason <laughs> I will finish and after you ask another question if you can. <laughs> no more questions. Ah, great, I've said everything here. And the third reason I started magic too is that I met Lisa Mena. Oh. And Lisa Mena was doing clever magic, mm -hmm. feminine, mm -hmm. woman-like magic, mm -hmm. but not saying I'm a woman and I'm doing magic. She was doing quick change mm -hmm. in close-up situations mm -hmm. and that was inspiring. Mm -hmm. And I just identify myself because I say, oh, ladies are into magic too, so maybe I can. And before that, I didn't have the, you know, the click. When you grew up, your father was already a professional magician. Oh yeah, he was a professional magician since uh, 1972. So, what was this kind of feeling you had uh, that your father was a, pro a professional magician, was an artist? Uh, how was the family life? For yeah, you? in fact, that's a great question because uh, when I saw my dad, I am born in, uh, I was born in 1973, and what I have uh, felt with my dad working every all day long because he's a very hard worker i felt he was having fun and for a little girl a little child we don't care girl or boy it's really important that you can feel that your parents job are inspiring uh, funny uh, that they like to just get up in the morning and just yeah i'm going to do this and that and to create and to perform and so that's the great thing about magic, is that you touch so many fields, not only a card How trick. was the family life for family you life, as, as, very, a, as a child? Very normal. My dad was working at home, creating his stuff, doing, uh, giving a lot of lessons to many students. And my mom was working in a, an office during the daytime. She was coming back, of course, at the, at the end of the afternoon. I come back from school and I was doing my homework. It's a normal life. And you developed your interest by your own. Your father didn't push you or said, come on, no. have a look and my, uh, take my a hate, part. Oh no, my head would have hated me. Hate the fact that I was going to do magic because he was a magician. <laughs> I kept asking him, please, dad, show me a card trick or show me a trick. And he was not doing that. So you liked what your father did? 
Yeah, yeah. I was interested. I was curious. Okay. And I think he has developed that curiosity. And curiosity in magic and mostly in life is one of the most important thing in life to be curious. So yes, he has developed that. And um, I kept asking him, show me a trick, show me a trick. He didn't. And one day he gave me a book. <laughs> he just wrote. And learning magic on a book is not one of the easiest way. You know, we, everybody has learned on a book or a DVD or a YouTube thing. But it was tough. And when he saw I have worked by myself, then he helped me. And then we worked together. Um, so, <clears throat> more or less you have answered this, but this yeah. is uh, the question I had on my mind is, what does magic mean to you? Magic, like I, effectively yeah. I have answered a little bit, because magic is a way to communicate. Okay. It's a way to give. Give in a big sense, not to give, uh, I give energy, I give love because, you know, I, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. And when I have an audience that responds, it gives me even more love to give them. So it's, you know, a circle. But why magic? There are other possibilities to communicate with people. Sure, but it was easy because my dad was a magician, so okay. very easy baby, you know. Mm -hmm. My dad had a lot of friends, has a lot of friends in magic, so I met the greatest. I, he showed me the greatest magicians uh, because he had a very big collection, so I had a, a, a full knowledge of what is, do, is done and can be done. So, and magic has a great advantage, I would say, it's that it's creative. And uh, I could have been an actress, but it's difficult to communicate with your audience being an actress. You went to school? You finished your school? I finished school, sure. Did you do any studies? Did you no. learn anything? No, because in fact, you know, it was a crossroad in 1991. My dad bought the oldest magic shop in the world, Mayette Magie, in 1808. And he bought it in 1991. And I was here, so I had to choose. Being at the shop, learning my job, or going back to my studies. And I, I have chosen the, to, to learn my craft on, in the shop, to learn many tricks, to demonstrate. Which, you know, I am not a fan of it, but it's good because it, lear it teaches you many things. So it was good, a good school. Tough, but good. So you're a professional magician since... Since uh, you no, have... Yeah, thought. since I am yeah. 15. Yeah. I am doing magic for 33 years now. So. And you still enjoy it? Do I look like? <laughs> do, I, do I look like bored? <laughs> no, I love it. In fact, now I enjoy it more now than before. Because now I feel more comfortable, I feel more self-assured. I, I am not, you know, like this, but when I, was start, when I started magic, I didn't believe in my abilities, none of them. The one who was, who is my greatest fan is my dad. And I don't know how he saw that from me because he saw my capabilities. And I, I tell you, I, I don't understand how he saw that, but I worked a lot more than others because people expected me more because I was the daughter of Dominique de Vivier. So it was a good school too. I don't regret anything. I think it's the best thing that could happen. Um, I looked for your name in the internet mm -hmm. <laughs> many <And> times. <laughs> and what happened? <laughs> no, 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 no. Somehow you are more or less, I think, always I would say 95% okay. connected with your father. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, that way. Is, isn't this a problem for you to be more or less in the shadow of your father? Do uh, you feel yourself like a shadow in the father? No, I don't feel like a shadow because my dad, like I told you earlier, he has always pushed me. He is the one who told me in 2001, do a one-woman show. Uh -huh. I said, no, I can't, no, no, because you know, I, I'm afraid, I don't want to do it. I said, do it. So we wrote together, he wrote me a one-woman show that fits me. He said, what do you want to say? What do you want to do? And he just, you know, like a, a tailor, he just put a, a suit on me and that fits me perfectly. And that was a great experience. So now I have three different one-woman shows of one hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, I am, 
In fact, you know what? I don't feel being in the shadow of my dad. And even if I felt it, what's the problem? If I was in the shadow of somebody who is not creative, not good in magic, a uh, poor guy, okay, I understand, it would be a problem. But you know, my dad is great. He's doing many things. He's still performing. He's a, a, a big influence. And not only, but he's a big influence. So yeah, yeah, okay. It's I am in the shadow of my dad, of my dad and good. <laughs> I love it. No problem. I don't have that type of problem. You know, ego is not an issue for me. For, maybe for others, it's mm -hmm. a problem, but it's their problems. It's not mine. I'm fine. By one conversation which I listened uh, on YouTube, I uh, realized you have children? Sure, I have two. Two? Yeah. You have a husband? I do. I have the husband that goes with the children. What is he doing? He's doing magic. He's running the shop, in fact. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he's doing, uh, taking care of the shop, uh, selling at the shop, doing everything at the shop. Okay. So we get along very How old well. Are your children? They are 10 and 14. Oh. That's great. Girls and boys? I Girls? took one of each. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's talk about Penn and Teller for a while. Oh, la. Yeah. Yeah? That's wow. That's an experience. That's an experience? Oh, yeah, it was marvelous. A lot of stress. And why? We know we have talked about this, this uh, yeah, last but night, but why did you want to perform on Penn and Teller? Mm, well, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's very simple. Life is, you know, people can think about many things, but things are very easy. I had, I had a trick to sell. My dad has that trick to sell. And um, he, say, he said, you know, you should do it to Penn and Teller. I said, what? But I've never done that trick. It's your trick. You have done it. You have created it uh, 40 years ago. I've do never done it. I, I wouldn't be able to do it. Still, that same sentence, you know, I am not able to do it. That's a... Uh, a light motif in my I don't know why but that's it, the way it is so he said yeah you should it's in two months you have two months to prepare I said what two months so okay I took the challenge and I just practice learn my speech in English try to be funny in English which is not my first language but I love speaking in English so that's fine and you know I've done it so yeah the reason is really easy cards in bag sib as we call it mm. is a great trick Especially because it's a principle more than one trick. Yes. Um, can, anyway. Um, but you didn't really fool Pinoncello. Oh, yeah. But you know, it was on TV, so everybody knows that. Sure. The thing is that it happened like that. I started the story yesterday, but I didn't finish it, in fact. I go there. I am uh, appointment at the Rio. I meet Michael Close and the late Johnny Thompson. I was lucky enough to meet Johnny Thompson. And I show the trick. He said, Joe, show me, is the table okay? Yeah, the table is great. So I do the trick and say, all right, great. Can you explain the trick? I didn't know what was I was supposed to do. So I said, yeah, okay, I explained the trick. So I explained the trick to the, those guys, those, the, you know, the, those top-notch magicians. I finish the um, explanation and they say, okay, I didn't understand. We didn't understand, but that's okay. So, okay, he said, okay, now you just have to wait, go there and there and, and just waited for my turn. And I performed the trick for Penn and Teller. I didn't meet Penn and Teller beforehand, never. Nobody deal, did there. Uh, and they come on stage and I see them for the first time. I've seen, you know, I've watched Penn and Tellers on TV many times and uh, they are stars for me. And now they are just next to me, so I am stressed. But I am prepared, so that's the good thing. And I do the trick. I do the trick, and now I just spread. And the five cards, and I just spread, and great. And now they go back to their seats and they speak to me. And they speak to me, and I don't understand anything of what they are telling me because, you know, They speak a bit fast, my English is okay, but not that great, and uh, I don't understand. Then, uh, Taylor comes to me, make a drawing, and he doesn't make a drawing, he, 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 he says, stripper. And I, you know, I read stripper, and I, it's not the time to argue. It's not the moment to say, yes, it's a stripper deck, but no, in fact, it's not completely a stripper deck, it's a double stripper, and you have two negative, one positive. You can't say all of that. 
on TV to Penn and Teller. So I say, yes, you, you understood the trick. And Teller go back and you go, bye bye. And I go. Half an hour later, they just call me back and I say, we have to reshoot things because they're now. And I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm here and the Penn and Teller are talking and they say, how do you say in French, you fooled me? And that was amazing because in fact what happened, I don't know, but I think that's what happened. In the little ears, Penn and Taylor, uh, Johnny Thompson talked to them, Michael Klaus talked to them and mm. said, no, you didn't get how it is because it's a double stripper. You have one negative deck, one positive deck. And in fact, you just take one and say, I don't, I'm not going to go into details here, but, and, uh, after I met briefly two seconds teller and they say to me, you know, sorry, but we do mistakes too. And I said, no problem. But yeah, sure, first time I didn't fool them because they thought they have they were having and the And then you reshot them? And I reshot Final. only the ending. Yeah. And on the it was on the you know the first the first of April. Oh <laughs> TV? Yeah. No, that was not shot on the first okay, of April, but yeah. they have shown that on the first of April okay. TV ah. for Penn and Teller. Oh, and they, they, they just say what the reality was very fair very you know it was a great experience great experience and we sold many all the tricks but you know most importantly that i really didn't chat about that yesterday i think that most importantly people it was a reminder for them that mm. i existed so it was great because you know we sell the trick and people just say oh we remember alexandra she's there oh where where so it was a good experience for many, many things. And for me, it was great being on TV, American TV. Then after, I, for three or four years now, I am on Masters of Illusion. I yeah. go back each year. They invite me. <laughs> Did they invite you to Las Vegas? As it is the rule with Penn and Teller, if yeah. they have been fooled? You yeah. performed in their show? I don't know. Because you have two options when you fool them. Yeah. Either you take the money yeah. or you, you participate to their show. Okay. And I took the money. The money. Okay. I took the money for one very easy reason because I had gigs I have shows in my own country okay. and I couldn't okay. go back and forth like this okay. and you know Vegas is really far oh, yes. from, yes. from our countries from Europe yeah. so it's it was easy like that easier like that but I would have loved to perform with them of course um, I saw your show in, at the women's ah, gala great. yes I didn't like the women's gala the what? Which one? The women gala I didn't like. You didn't like it? No. Really? Why women gala? Why? We I understand. This is this is a good thought. Why oh, women? Yeah. Would you just and, and women would you do the only one and you still do uh, touching me is your performance. Uh -huh. No no no, Thank I'm you. not saying this because I'm here and uh, I want to be nice to you. No 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 no. Uh, I have my heart on my tongue as you say. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no, no. And it's still touching me. But merci, merci. what I would like to know, yeah. um, especially this thing with the cards to the um, lyrics of the song. Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge. Yes. Oh, I, I and, love the, it. and then the end with the cards. But you know, I mean it, I mean it so much. And I that, feel so fortunate. And that's what I felt, that oh. it is authentic what you do there. Yeah. It, and this, you said you want to communicate with your art, mm -hmm. and you do communicate ah, with great. your art. I'm too. so happy. Thank yeah. you, because it's really important for me. Thank you very but much. But I would like to know, <laughs> yes. because this turning over the cards and oui? the words oui? somehow reminds me of uh, Le Grand Blanc avec une chaussure, chaussure noire. noire. Le Grand Blanc avec une chaussure noire, ah oui. Do you know Why? this? Sure, I know it's a Pierre you know the, Do you know, yes, do you know the introduction to no, this No, remind me. It's a long time ago since That's I did that. what they do with cards. Ah, they do something yes. with cards? and I thought perhaps this was my Jacks doing because they were oh. playing with cards. Really? And then they turn over the cards and say the director uh, ah, costume. I have uh, to see it again. Ah, oh, that's great. No, in fact, uh, to be really precise, my influence is my dad because my dad has done many things. You know printing? He's strict printing. He has sold thousands of the, that trick, yeah. printing card. Uh, that's the, the inspiration. Because my dad has worked a lot, you know, in the 70s, 80s, on his big inspiration is movies. Okay. Yeah, movies. Well, you ask him. Yeah. I'm sure he knows this. Uh, if you ah, wait, wait, wait. Sure. I, I'm positive he, he knows the sequence. 
the opening sequence. I don't know if we can see it here. Uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just trying to find it. Ah, nice. Good. I'm good too. That's great. But that's, you know, that's the great thing about magic. You can touch many fields. You are not only a card guy or a coin guy. You can be running a shop. You can be creating backstage. You can be on stage. You can be a talker. You can do lectures. You can do uh, uh, corporate explaining to the you know to companies the relation relationship. Oh, what is that? You can explain the relationship between you know the world of corporate and magic. There are so many parallel to on both worlds. Um, this is exactly what. Um, I feel mm. and what I uh, try to do with not my magic but everything I do I live on magic for 40 years five, yeah. 50 years yeah. and I always suffer from people who do not respect our art as an art yeah. so in my little theater uh, every night I say you talk about theater you talk about movies concerts but in this, con yes. in this connection you would never talk about magic oh, or name it Sure. And this is a pity mm. because we have nothing. We are we are we are nothing below these artists. Mm. Of course, no, are, of course. Are, you know, even on top. My dad is completely agrees with you. He has always thought and fight for that. Yeah. And we have made fight. I told you that yesterday. Five years. It took us five years in France to make the art of magic recognized by the Ministry of uh, Work. No, didn't say so. no. We can give. Um, diploma, yeah. a two years diploma, yeah. de two years degree diploma to people who come yeah. study in our school yes. one year yeah. and after they have a diploma like mm. dancers, like music, like theater. And it is accepted circus, by the government as and a it is at, Yes, by the Ministry of Labor. Whoa. Five years of work because my dad, like you've just said, we th not we think, we know that magic is an art. Yes. By itself. So yeah, this is very true, and that's what we think and we believe. Not think, believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is important to, to do everything. You know, all what's happening here for in the convention is important because it's a small stone to the art. And maybe one day you'll have a diploma here also in Germany that recognize magic as an art. We are the. Precursor, I don't know how in, you say in English, but you know, we are the first one to do that mm -hmm. because the first diploma in the world. Mm -hmm. This is great mm -hmm. and also a pity because it should have been done earlier. But you know, somebody had to beginning. It's my dad and I, we, we've done it. The double fond has done it. So that's cool. But yes, we fight for that. Magic is an art. Fuck. Don't say that. I will write exactly what you sure. say. No, but yes, you can say because I really do believe in that. I do believe in my art. I believe in. We can do so many things. We are only uh, clay. So, poor performances must hurt you. Are we? Yeah. A lot. Okay. Especially ladies' poor performances. Oh. Because you know the problem is that. You know, somebody asked me a question in an interview. They asked me, what do you see for the future of magic? I say, I see that there are more people performing and doing magic as an art. And I didn't fall in the trap of saying, I wish there are more women into magic. Of course, great. I, I, I am happy if there are more women in magic, but I don't want women in magic. I want good performers in magic. That is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. what, what do we care about women? Of course, this is the, you know, there are good things and bad things about everything. Yeah. And the Me Too, the Me Too experience, the Me Too movement yes. is great. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's bad because now women must be everywhere. Yeah. Okay, I, I love having, a, and I hate this word, female magician. <laughs> I hate female, why female magician? But wait, okay. Magician, lady magician. Then you know that I didn't like the show. <laughs> the women's show. Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's only good performers that we yeah. need to represent our art. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And the problem with women, they just show, hey, hey, they are with their bathing suit and uh, yeah. Um, That's it's, cool. it's a joy to talk to you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Talking but about joy. I love talking to you too. 
your greatest joy in magic, except mm. your father. <laughs> My kids. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because sweet. like I was saying to a friend, you know, yeah. there is not only magic in life, come on. Yes. I love magic. It's my life, it's okay. my job, it's my passion. Mm -hmm. But I love so many other things besides magic. Hopefully for me. I love reading, I love uh, going to museums, I love watching my kids growing. Mm -hmm. Because it's a source, that's, you know, watching my kids just reminds me of how I was just a few years ago mm -hmm. <laughs> when I was mm -hmm. younger. Mm -hmm. And childhood, you know, that's what I like when I talk about childhood. That's why I do tricks with sweets, for instance. Okay. And I don't do it especially for kids, I do it for grown-ups. Because I think that they have lost or forget or just put something on the, their childhood. But we we have the same things in common. That's mm -hmm. why when I do the thread and I break it and I say, I have seen uh, the end of Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston and Robin Williams. We have all seen that end and many other things like that. We have. We live the same things, but at different moments in our lives. And that's important to remind this, you. This was the nicest pattern, you know pattern? The pattern, nice yeah. story yeah. to this Hindu uh, uh, I'm uh, glad. trick. The nicest pattern I've ever heard. Really? It's Thank nothing uh, uh, like... Uh, Called, uh, with the grey beer uh, Eugene, Eugene Burger. Burger which is it's another way of no, seeing no, no, it they, they uh, exaggerate many magicians exaggerate yeah it's and, and they want to force their feelings onto me and that's mm. wrong no. okay, so that's I why understand. I said you are authentic so but still your greatest joy in magic in not magic, in life in magic uh, that's a tough question yes it's a tough question because I have many, but uh, for instance, my third one-woman show, Secrets of Fabrication, is one of my joy because I feel good, because it really fits me perfectly. Okay. And I just tell things that are very personal, like Moulin Rouge and The Thread, it's in my show, in this, this show. And that show is very important for me because it really fits me like a glove. And again, my dad and I, we have worked on it to... It's a full evening show, 90 minutes? One, one hour and a half. One yeah, hour and a half, yeah. okay. And I love it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's me. And it's about what? what is, uh... It's about my life, you know. Okay. I was in ah. love with a guy when I was uh, 12, 14, and I talk about that in the mentalism trick, but which is not mentalism. It's about me loving a guy that I didn't talk about because I was too shy to talk to him and, and so on and mm -hmm. you know and Moulin Rouge and the thread and I just you know I just share my experience with mm -hmm. some 50 person in the theater okay. Very nice. and what is your greatest regret or disappointment in magic you know I try in my life not to have too much regrets, otherwise you can see people having many regrets and they are, I don't have the word in English, but uh, they are grey, you know, the color grey, they are not okay. white, they are grey, they are ah, yeah. sad, yeah. they are not happy with their lives. Yeah. Of course I have many regrets, because as soon as you told me that the question, I say, I have this, I have that, I could, uh, uh, I have many regrets, but I try not to have because I want to move on. But what is it? still in magic? What is still in magic, in I, I should magic? have, you know, I should have done more uh, for me because one of my thing is I mostly think about the others before than me. So I have worked a lot for others and not enough for myself. That's what my dad tells me all the time. You should work more for your tricks. <laughs> <laughs> and he's right. So that's one of my regrets. But I'm working on it. Okay. Is there anything you would not do again in magic? Have you done any shows or any... Uh, of course, yeah? mistakes. You, you yeah. always do mistakes. That, okay. uh, but I learn. You know, you mostly learn from your mistakes. Of course, yes. You <laughs> mistakes. learn from your mistakes, yes. But when you have a standing ovation, yeah. you learn also many things, I think. <laughs> People who say that you only learn from your mistakes, yeah. uh, it's a bit uh, narrowed, Narrow, okay. I think. Okay. You learn from anything. It depends on your nature. I am a positive nature, so I learn from everything. And I mostly learn from everybody. Because when they do mistakes, yeah. I say, okay, I shouldn't do that because it happens to him okay. and I don't want to happen to me. So, to answer your question, that's tough. My biggest regrets in magic. I don't have an example. I should think about it. It will give me a few minutes. 
Well, maybe one of my regrets is not to have learned. Comment tu t'appelles un chapelet Tamaris, Tamaris, a stack deck. I should have learned a stack deck. <laughs> Because if I have learned it 10 years ago, I should be wow, fluent in stack deck. And now I am just a Christ. <laughs> no, no. Well, something like that, you know? I want to do more, but I have not enough time. So, what do you like most in magic? Performing. And what do you don't like in magic? Mm, rehearsal, you know, uh, tech rehearsal. Tech rehearsal. Okay. Okay. Put the lights. I don't. You know, when I do a tech rehearsal, the thing is that I don't want to annoy the technicians. Uh -huh. I have needs, but I don't want to impose them my needs. And for me, it's tough to say. I need this light. I need this sound. I need. Oh, no, no, it's a mess for me. So I make it the most easiest, uh, the most easy, the easiest possible way for the technicians. I have. It's, Almost no needs. Okay. So that's why one, you know, for a convention yeah, like that, yeah. I know that they have plenty of artists to share, to, to, to deal with, yeah. and I arrive with my. It's again, you 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 take care of others. That's exactly it. You know, but that's it's a fil rouge in my yes, fil rouge, yes. in my life. Okay. So I try not to impose too much. Your show, what is called, what is your, this third show called? Secret of Fabrication, Secrets of Fabrication. So okay. it's right because I say my secrets of fabrication, but of myself, not of my tricks. <laughs> so I don't say any of my secrets, of course. Magical secrets. But for me, it's part of my secrets. How important do you think are secrets? How important are secrets? I think this is the mystery of, you know, when you meet someone for the first time, we all have secrets. And uh, this is good to have some and to discover one by one the secrets in the conversation. You know, I can, one of your secrets is that you are moved by authenticity, authenticity. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's great, but I couldn't expect or guess that when we met uh, in 2003 for instance <laughs> i didn't knew that i didn't uh, guess it at all and yet now i have one of, you, of your secrets that's great um are you angry when people expose magic no not at all that's great for magic You know, that's the more, okay, yeah, that's great for magic. Why? Why? Because the more you talk about magic, the more magic is represented, and the more people will maybe do magic. So that's great. You have a saying in French: "It's plus on est fou, plus on rit." The more we are, the more we laugh. It's good. That is fascinating, Alexandra. It's you know, it's it's a way of thinking. I'm positive. Mm -hmm. All type of uh, I am positive. I like life. So you never cared about the mask magician? No. No, no, that's good. I wouldn't have done it myself, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Not because I am masked, but because yeah. I respect too much the art of magic to expose okay. certain mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, if you ask me, but you don't, but mm -hmm. you say, but you are exposing tricks because you release DVDs mm -hmm. and you have the Netflix mm -hmm. of magic and you expose some tricks. Mm -hmm. Sure, but it's a, it's a give and take, it's a share. Yeah. And thanks to that, there will be more people involved in magic, passionate by magic, and the world of magic will grow. And thanks to that, people will understand, recognize, realize that magic is an art. Yes. Um, I, have, I have nothing against the mass magicians. To me, it's a silly show, it was a silly show. But what I didn't like is the way they exposed. Why? Like it's oh, it's, uh, it's so easy. That's like they want to cheat you. I, I don't want to cheat my people. That's true. Yeah, That's so. true. When I teach yeah, a trick yeah. to a uh, lay audience because they ask yeah, me, yeah. I always say, watch how clever magic is. Exactly. And I am enthusiastic yeah, yeah. because it's really clever. Yeah. You know, when people show me the tricks, they are like, wow. So Still, when you, you go in the dealer's room, mm -hmm. there are thousands of tricks and new principles all the time. That's mm -hmm. Captivating, yeah, isn't it? Yes. Um, 
Oh. Sorry, I. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Still, in general, how is magic regarded in your country? What do people connect with magic? When they say, when they hear there's a magic show, how would they Good react? reactions. You know, the French audience is Cartesian. Descartes, René Descartes is a philosopher yeah. who said we have to understand everything. Okay. So French wants to understand everything, what's going on. Okay. So they want to understand magic. And my dad has a great saying about that. Is that he says that uh, if you can fool the French audience, you can fool any audiences in the world because the French are the toughest. <laughs> That's great. That's a great tool. Again, it's very positive because you can say, oh, it's a pain in the ass because we are French and they want to. So French people in general don't think of children's magic when they hear, when they hear about a magic show? They think about rabbit and hat. Okay. Old magic. Of course, yes. Yeah. Of course, yes. But we have a great magician, a French magician, which is called... I don't think you know him. It's Eric Antoine. Of course I know Eric. Ah, great. Antoine, by name, so, at least by name, yes. Nice. So yes, Eric yes, Antoine yes, has yes. done a great thing for magic. Yes, because he has one... shows. Uh, voilà. Yes. His shows. And first, in Incroyable Talent, it's kind of the... Um, Americans get talent, but yes, in French. Yeah. Uh, Incroyable Talent. He has done it and won it. And now he's one of the member of the jury. Mm -hmm. So that's great exposure for magic because mm -hmm. the, it shows that magic is a job, mm -hmm. an art, mm -hmm. can be funny mm -hmm. and strong, mm -hmm. and you can be somebody, uh, you can be a star. So mm -hmm. that's great for magic. It's kind of, he's not like David Copperfield, like mm -hmm. David Copperfield, but he's as known in France as David Copperfield. In mm -hmm. France, I mean. Huh? Yes. And that's great for the magic, uh, the, the art of magic, because now he can do Uh, rooms with uh, 5,000 people mm -hmm. and doing his shows, mm -hmm. so that's marvelous. People yeah. finally understand that magic can be funny and strong, Otto, and not boring. Otto Wesley, you know him. Yeah, sure, yeah. it's a uh, fan. He's, he's writing a uh, column in my magazine ah, for really? a long many time. years. Ah, years, so he years. speaks about it. Yes, yes, of course, yes. of course. Yes. And in the uh, next column, he speaks about uh, Jérôme Jacques and Macron. About oui, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is no, there anything else you would like to say to my readers? Um, <laughs> a, a, first, clever, a clever advice. A clever, oh, I don't know if it will be clever, but uh, first, I, um, I hope you will be interested in this interview because I know that the German uh, audience doesn't know me very well. So I am very happy and very honored that you asked me to do this interview, Vitus. It's really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And a, a wise advice, I don't know, you know. A wise advice... Uh, I can say go to Double Fond TV and watch many tricks on my platform of magic, but this isn't the advice. The real advice is to work. And uh, when you are done working, you work more. And when you have done your work, you do more work. And when you are done with that, you just find a character and try something to say because what people want to, to show, to see on stage is a human being not someone who plays a character of somebody else just being yourself and this is so important so this that's what took me the most time in my life but nowadays i am happy and uh, i feel cool because you know finally i know who i am and i can express that in front of you readers and in front of you guys here for instance in magica <laughs> so moving. Thank I've, you so much. I have done many, many interviews. I know, of with course. Kevin James, oh, Kevin. With Kevin James. With Copperfield. Ah, yes. With uh, Franz Harari. We. Oui. With, uh, I don't know. I know, you know, But I know you. And I know, I have asked several questions. I ask everybody. Mm. I've never ever heard answers like you. <laughs> Mm. Thank you. I don't know. I have to read the other interviews to, to know what they said. <laughs> But uh, you know, no, it sounds no. so logical for me because this is my path. That's why I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> Merci, Wade. Oui, it is. No.
thank you for giving me the opportunity of saying all of this because you know no, I rarely you. talk I, I rarely talk because if you ask me I just talk because as you can see <laughs> I talk I talk fast and I talk but you know I pr I'm pretty shy otherwise not on stage but <laughs> but you know that shyness was um, how do you say a break you know in cars you break yeah, and you just break, it's a break yeah. it was a break because I couldn't say so hello to somebody without uh, having my how do you say blushing blushing yeah, yeah but getting red getting red getting exactly red, yeah. and it was tough for me very tough mm -hmm. if you see videos of me when I began in uh, in 1988 or in the beginning of the 90s it was a I I make people suffer watching me because I was in a suffer. I was suffering myself. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I think my biggest, uh, what I'm proud, the most proud, is to be like I am today because it took me a lot of years and a lot of, a lot of work.